Okay, so thanks for the invitation and for being here so late. Um, I had uh, the responsibility, I was asked to wake you up, right? So I have developed some strategies. One of them is to tell you some fancy stuff um, that may attract your attention. And perhaps my main goal is not to let you sleep well today, right? Which is a way of extending your life following the previous discussion. Um, the, the title um, is a shared uh, poem line with uh, Wolfgang Kerler, by the way. We were fighting in LinkedIn. And I like it a lot, it's Quantum Art at the dawn of the quantum metaverse. The problem is now to provide content, right? So essentially these um, ideas of quantum art and the quantum metaverse are meant to be evidently a provocation to the great discussions of yesterday and all the moves that you hear around the world concerning, for example, Facebook hanging on this concept of metaverse, taking just the first part meta, which brings sometimes not the nicest uh, images to some people. Uh, but essentially, um, uh, th this is a place where we are in, in history. And uh, when I hear the, the interesting discussion before about ethical issues, I can tell you that everything I will tell you uh, today in these 25 minutes, so that you can ask a couple of questions, uh, is absolutely not taking care of any ethical issue which, by the way, I don't care at all either. So that's my position. I would have left the, the panel immediately, the previous one, because um, I'm very concerned about ethical issues, but I don't work with ethical issues. Um, in an interview I was giving for a Spanish new, uh, journalist some years ago, spontaneously came from me the following expression. I said, I would feel me ashamed to live in a society that forbids the access to any knowledge. And I'm still defending that. But uh, I let you with that reflection for, for, for the after party, right? So um, yeah, I, I am leading this Kipu Quantum Company. Uh, I, I have created a couple of companies, but in this case it is Kipu. I will say a few things later. But essentially we are trying to break the concepts. Sometimes, uh, and we, we are in fundraising, and sometimes the people say uh, whether we are competing with some other companies, which offends me deeply, right? Because my whole career and since I was a child, I have been fighting for the right to do very original things. And the quantum art and the quantum metaverse is just a reflection of that. And I will be sharing with you some of the ideas. Another comment I wanted to tell you on the line of my talk is what I have told my students um, since many years, is that when you go to a stage like this, and there are people like you that are friendly, they're trying to hear something interesting, um, don't disappoint them, right? So, and, and, and the essence is go there and try to say things that nobody can say, um, only you, right? If, if, if you say things that others can say, don't go, right? So <laughs> let us see if I can <laughs> succeed in this challenge to my students, right? So this is the first slide. Uh, if you realize this slide is full of text, because I have bad memory, right? I have written absolutely um, thousands of lines so that I can remember, only that I have a quantum augmented reality and, and it is written in the atomic degrees of freedom of the screen so, so that I can remember, right? And that's part of the quantum metaverse at the end, right? So essentially art, um, I will tell you what is art for me. Uh, because I consider myself an artist, is just the expression of the human being through intelligence, and that's something that you're going to hear several times in my talk. And when I say intelligence of human beings, I also mean intelligence of agents, that means could be robots, uh, generalized artificial intelligence, or many kinds of, 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 of codifications of intelligence. Human intelligence is just the most elevated that we know, but now we are creating artificial ones, right? So, so when, when an artificial agent or, or an intelligent human being tries to express himself or herself, uses tools typically that are outside, sometimes part of the organs of the, of the human being, and try to transform them artificially to express something in aesthetic terms. Aesthetic meaning whatever you want, something that is not necessarily useful, but you want to 
put a part of your inner demons onto this with these tools on some matter or, or on some light, right? So that's more or less what I what I would call um, arts. And uh, for, for for making arts, you need to observe, evidently, right? The human being or the or the intelligent agent has to observe and, and to have an environment. <coughs> and typically, the artist is unhappy with the environment. An artist is never happy. A happy artist is just mediocrity, right? He's unhappy, and that's why you have to create things that do not exist. And that's what we are all trying to do every day in our lives, short or long. Yeah? And, and, and science is on the other side, the same observation that we do every day. We observe also the environment, objects, and sometimes we try even to transform them. But the goal of science is mostly describing with some models. Sometimes they are mathematical, sometimes you use your intuition. And when you try to describe them, you use these models to try to be even predictive. And when you have models and predictions that are weird or unusual, scientists feel happy, right? So a scientist is a child. It's a child because even though it looks very serious trying to describe the deep things of nature, uh, somehow <laughs> we, we are pleased when we say, look, I have discovered the new property. It's very strange. Huh? And now I understand it, but it's a little strange. While the artist is not ashamed of saying, I do useless things, right? And I just do that because I want to express me aesthetically through that way. So um, as many of you have read, perhaps through Twitter, I have written many times a sentence that it comes to my head many times. And it is that at the end, art and science for me are just the same, are two sides of the same coin. And the name of that coin is sensorial experience, right? It's through sensorial experience that we observe and create art aesthetically or that we unveil properties of nature for creating science. OK, so that's more or less my introduction of how I see art and science. I personally am here talking to you about these topics because I, since I was a child and I was able to think a little bit, I never found a difference between the artistic activity and the scientific activity. I never. I struggled my whole life to that. And I solved it some years ago when I realized, man, it is just the same, right? And I have been doing arts with science and vice versa in the last 10, 20 years with a lot of happiness. Now comes what is quantum physics and quantum computing. This is also very simple, right? But I will tell you my views. Uh, in the case of quantum physics, everybody, by the way, some of the organizers were telling me, Kike, be careful, right? You have the people have to understand. If not, they sleep. In fact, people sleep when they don't uh, understand. And sometimes when they understand too, uh, or at least they start to dream, right? And in the case of quantum physics, it's pretty simple, right? For example, I, I, I was hearing some colleagues uh, from Finland, from Iceland. Uh, in the, if you see the history of the human being, when, when the human being was moving, right? And you go to the desertic areas, you go to the North Pole, or you go to the sunny places. When you travel, when you live, when you grow, when you go to the university, you are constantly looking for new things. You want to be surprised. You want to learn. You want to contrast your vision, right? So that's what scientists did. And it, when it was a time to go to the microscopic world of the atoms uh, and, and the photons, you know, the little things of matter and light, suddenly we discovered that the way to understand those objects were not as familiar as, as was to describe stones, tables, cars, or airplanes, right? And the most important learning that we did as a human species about these small objects called atoms and photons is that they need a modeling that is not corresponding with the reality, right? When I tell you, for example, that this remote control is in this position and at this time, right? Well, it's, it's a banality, right? OK, this is a lie. That's what I have learned with quantum physics. What I have learned is that to model, to associate a position and a time, is just an artificial modeling that helps to describe the objects. In quantum physics, when, an atom, when we observe an atom, we need models where the atoms are in two, three, or infinite places at the same time, sometimes very far apart. And we have to accept that model. That model is not the reality of the atom, 
because when we observe the atom, instead of being in all places at the same time, the atom appears here or appears there with a certain probability that fortunately we can compute, predict and calculate. From that point of view, quantum physics is the most exact theory that a human being has developed in all fields, right? There is nothing, nothing more beautiful, simple, intuitive, correct and exact than quantum physics. And if we have to say that to model an atom, we have to accept that the atom can be described as being in several places at the same time, you know, and you say, Professor, I don't understand. I'm always disturbed by such a question. <laughs> the goal of, this, of the human beings is not to understand or to say that something is weird or correct, you know. The goal of the scientist and of the curious person and of the artist is to describe and predict what nature is and to use nature to transform it such that we create things that do not exist because we have the artistic soul. That's all, right? We are not here to tell nature how it should be, right? So the atoms behave like that. And with, that, with those atoms, we have been able to create quantum computers, right? And, and that's a very important thing. You say, what is a quantum computer? Nothing else than using the fundamental laws of physics of the atoms that can be in several places at the same time and treat them like conveyors of information, in this case, quantum information. And what we have discovered in the last decades is very impressive, is that many of the problems, um, I have not been hearing all the talks, but I was amazed by the previous panel. And I can tell you, if you tell me global warming, climate prediction, carbon emission, planets, survival, biology, medicine, genetics, economy, everything that is interesting for the human being today and always, everything cannot be computed even with all the supercomputers of the planet. So everything that is important for the human being cannot be computed. So the pride we have in the electronics of our computers, I, at least I don't have it. They are very stupid. Our, our if you take a supercomputer in survey, it's very stupid, very limited, right? We cannot compute the important things. And then with quantum computers, we have discovered a possibility of at least to tackle some of the most difficult problems, like protein folding or design of the structure of the molecules for, for drug uh, uh, design or logistic problems or biological problems. There are plenty, plenty of solutions. The way to understand why quantum computing is so exciting, even though if you read the press, it's, it's truly boring uh, and, and full of lies. What, what moves me, why I'm, I'm here trying to connect arts with quantum computers, is because many years ago I read a beautiful story of my favorite writer in all languages, that is Jorge Luis Borges. Probab I don't know how you pronounce it in Germany, Borges or the Borges, I don't know, right? But he's a brilliant geometrist of literature. And he wrote a story that is called the, the Tower of Babel, right? And he describes a, a, a fictitious universe that is just infinite, full of books, but at the end he solves the problem of the infinity by periodic bo uh, boundary conditions. Right? You have to read the story, it's fantastic. And I always thought that quantum computing is going to provide solutions and answers to very, very important problems, but the infinite solutions are in this region, and all doors and windows are closed. And to open this, we have just to create scalable quantum computers with many, many quantum bits and many atoms, such that if we are able to push this gate, we will find those wonderful, oh, I just was out of the, the video. Uh, we will find all, all these solutions. So I feel me really, really uh, uh, kind of uh, proud to be contributing to this possibility of pushing this door so that we can approach this um, uh, infinite knowledge that is in this uh, library of Babel, right? A and that, that I'm, I'm very curious. So th there is infinite knowledge about very important things, you know, and all doors and windows are closed. You know, help us to push. That's what we are doing. Okay, perfect. Now, um, what is quantum arts then? That was one of the main topics of this, of this uh, talk. You know, uh, when I was describing the artist and, and the science and the technology and so on, for example, you are all familiar with digital arts. You know, the computers were not created for, for making art, for making digital art. The computers were created for computing or for curiosity, for developing some electronics, miniaturization, for, for many reasons. Suddenly, the human being discovered, wow, this creates 
uh, uh, computation algorithms. The algorithms have structure. I have fractals. I have geometry. I have topology. I have oh game screens, right? I have video. I have movies, and suddenly somebody started to create art with that. Why is this normal? And my answer is yes, because essentially an artist or an engineer is a person that is constantly looking for external artificial objects to transform them, to put them in, in these objects, the inner demons that corresponds to the ex aesthetic expression I was mentioning at the beginning. And for me, quantum art was an important discovery in my last years because I realized that I was trying to combine constantly my artistic interest to my scientific interest. And then one day I woke up and I said, guys, look around. You have a stone, you have sculpture. You have colors and canvas, you have painting. You have uh, strings and wood, you make a guitar and there is music. Okay, I have atoms and photons. Where is, where is my art, right? Where is my inner demons placed in those uh, objects? And then I started to play, no? but this was many years ago. And given that I have been always a rebel, that that's exactly what the others don't want, right? Uh, then I started to play the game, and my one of my most important achievements in is that I was saying how to take an atom and to force the atom to behave such that it contradicts its fundamental laws. You know, so I was creating the science fiction of quantum computers. So how to take, you know, instead of if making fiction, like making Hamlet, right, how to take the atoms and to say, what, which is your fundamental law? This one. I will push you so that you behave in a way that everybody says, come on, you are not an atom. Why you behave like that, right? So I started, and I created, the name was um, Quantum Simulation of Unphysical Operations. I gave plenty of talks, and the title of all my talks were Quantum Theater, right? For me, the quantum theater was the place where atoms and photons were just the actors performing things that were false, right? But of course, my colleagues that are, look very serious, you know, to be serious in science and in art is a deep sign of stupidity, as you probably know. At least I know that, right? And you, you can laugh because it was a joke, right? <laughs> There's no problem. <laughs> it was a, a way to, to free my frustration uh, the, the last years. And and then, and then I continue working on, on how to associate quantum physics, quantum computing and arts. And suddenly in the last years, I realized that instead of playing and, and forcing my colleagues to accept things that were not normal in the context of serious research, we discovered that with quantum computers, we could create art accepting that atoms and photons can be just matter like clay, like canvas, like colors, like, like musical instruments. And then we have created this field of quantum arts, where we have, def we have defined how a quantum computer can create music, compose and create, of course with some structure, right, where aesthetics, because aesthetics needs purposeful people, right, intelligence. For creating art, you need intelligence, because without intelligence be natural for humans or artificial for agents, you know, you need a purpose. When people tell me, in the CERN comes this, you see this figure, comes from the elementary particles in CERN. That's art. That's not art. Art needs purpose. This is a coincidence, not that one, right? But let's say when, when, when people show you a figure, where is the artist? You, know, you need an artist. And in this case, we were able to create musicists, painters, and, and audio and video experts using quantum computers for placing their inner demons on the quantum computers and extracting artistic pictures, right? So this is one example. <laughs> by the way, it is the only one that we have announced. This was done by my company, Kipu Quantum. It's Kipu Quantum, creature number zero. So this is the first piece. It's not the first piece in quantum arts because many colleagues now are working on that. But I just wanted to tell you that this this little figure that we take it um, like, a, like a game, right? If you see, this is like the eyes. We try to synchronize the music with the, with the lights and so on. Comes from very sophisticated quantum computing tools from several Nobel Prizes result 2012, colleagues, Serge Roche, Dave Wineland, uh, the works of quantum, plenty of know-how, right? 
to be able to produce, to extract something that looks like a face of an animal, accompanied through a music that has been composed by a quantum computer in a very, very professional manner by experts in music. And, and you can imagine how to map and to create a melody that you want with your aesthetics associating the outcome that is random from the qubits to the melody. So it was very, very, very beautiful. Uh, very and, and we are working heavily now to create this like a market. At the end, it's, a f it's an aesthetic expression, but it's also a possibility of creating a market of quantum NFTs, as we want to call them. And there are many questions open. I mean, for the people that are familiar with it, we are even discussing whether the wave function of a, <laughs> of a qubit you know, can be sold or can be associated to an NFT. We speak about the centralized economy and the centralized uh, ownership in the case of the NFTs, but we don't know what can be a quantum network with many qubits around where the linear superpositions of the atoms being in different places at the same time can be produced. And how can you associate ownership, centralized or decentralized, to something that when you observe it, collapses and disappears, right? So that's a very interesting issue that we are working on. Probably the lawyers have a lot of work. And finally, the, the concept of the quantum metaverse, that is, uh, of course, the title of the talk was Quantum Art at the dawn of the quantum metaverse. I just was saying before that there is the possibility of developing quantum music with clear structures on how to extract melodies, uh, not only randomness, because this would have been the dream of many great musicists like John Cage or Edgar Varese, who, who were the pioneers of electronic music. There is a lot, of, or even the silence, right, associated to the quantum vacuum. There is a lot of work that we are trying to develop. Um, our goal in the company Kipu Quantum, unfortunately, is not to become artists, is to create the quantum instruments, the quantum paintings and the quantum instruments for music, you know, to, so that the artists can express themselves through these tools. We, we are not meant to be the artist, but we have to give some examples. So we are developing that so that very soon you will get in your telephone, for example, one of my fantasies is that next year you can pay some money for us, of course, right, such that you say, oh, Spotify, um, I want to filter my best song of Michael Jackson through a quantum computer and I want to create a distortion and you start to move like this with the, with the smart screen and there is a quantum computer online that is in my office of five qubits administrating as a quantum server of music for composition and distortion, right? Like a, like a quantum synthesizer. So there are many, many cool ideas. So the quantum metaverse is just a very easy uh, concept to understand because I don't know how much yesterday people were pedagogic, but you have to think augmented reality, virtual reality, internet of things, artificial intelligence. And if you check the famous book, uh, German by the way, who created the concept of Indust Industrie 4.0, no? and Industry 4.0, right? Uh, everybody agrees that quantum computing has to be involved in that. So from that point of view, when people speak about the metaverse, in particular, the company that has taken this like a property, this name, um, I think that there is a missing link there to quantum computing. Of course, the question would be what for, right? Because the people, when they think in the metaverse, is that some like, people completely stone, right? Full of glasses and, and, and headsets and totally alienated from the reality, like in the times of the opium. Unfortunately, this will be like that also, right? There is no way to run in the freedom of the people, you give them the possibility of abandoning the reality 24 hours during 25 years, it will be very hard to make a law that forbids a human being to do that, right? It's very similar to the opium times if you want, but we will have to deal ethically with that at a very respectful level of the laws. But what I consider seriously, and I can share with you, this is an advance, a, a kind of confidential info. Since month, we have finished a result that we have not published just because some co-authors are very lazy and we are very busy, you know, where we have used a brain-computer interface that you can get in Amazon for a few hundred bucks, right? And we have connected this brain-computer interface to a laptop who runs a Python code with artificial intelligence. This Python code with artificial intelligence understands the signal of the brain that at this primitive level is purely electrical signals, macro, right? But you can use some electrodes. And we have been able to connect this online to a quantum computer that is at 10,000 kilometers far apart. And we have been able with thinking, you know, with human thinking, we have been able to operate qubits in a quantum computer, right? So, so when, when, when I am telling you this, the summary is that 
I know, and you have to trust me, that we have already tested the possibility of controlling quantum computers online just by thinking, without doing nothing, just crossing the, the arms. You know, you think, and by thinking, you make that the quantum computer operates. So for me, the possibility to extend the metaverse to the quantum metaverse is not a, is not a crazy stuff. It is the distance to, to that in the technology is a few months, if you want, or one year, if, if, you, if you support it correctly. And, and the possibility would be that when I am, just to give you an example, when I am reading or a scientist is reading a paper and suddenly sees a problem that it has a computational complexity that is impossible at an a quantum computer, your mind just defers, outsource the, the task to a quantum computer, or you need quantum computer uh, computational capacity to operate better your augmented reality devices, immediately they are connected. So I, I don't see any difference of everything that people are talking about, about augmented reality, virtual reality, AI, Internet of Things, to put online quantum computers as external resources for anything that you may deem relevant, including the possibility, because as you know, quantum computers include randomness from first principles in a unique manner, and this is something that people even conjecture that the human brain may require, not at the fundamental level, quantum physics, but it is very likely that some processes of uh, decision making may require even a quantum model for better precision due to the, what people call, perhaps not true, free will, right? So with that, I just wanted to finish uh, my talk, right? just telling you uh, a small publicity of my company. Uh, for, nos for us, quantum computing in the business is very different. So as I say, we are bringing the iPhone moment to the quantum computers. We don't care who manufactured the CPU. Probably nobody of you would tell me who manufactured the CPU of your iPhone or of your smartphone, right? You don't know who wrote the code of the apps, you know, but you pay a lot of money. No? And, and that's uh, our idea to create full stack quantum computer products for the sake of a quantum arts or exhibition or schools or university or industry. So thanks a lot. I think I did it. Thanks, uh, Kike. Thanks for this uh, fascinating talk. Uh, just to clear one thing up, the guy who put his inner demons into this artworks over there is Dominic and he sits right there. Uh, we do have a, questions, uh, a question from the audience. And so, Christiane, what question came up? Yes, Wolfgang, we have a very special question from the 1 in 9 community. So the question is, would you have a quantum NFT as a special gift for the 1 in 9 community? Uh, quantum computers should generate them in billions for all of us. Wow. I promise that. I publicly here, I promise you to give you as a present to the 1 in 9 community a quantum NFT. And I hope you can sell it uh, at a very irrational price. <laughs> right? Perfect. Th thanks so much. Now, so I that's, that's, I can do that. Yes. Great. Yes. Thanks, uh, thanks, Kike. <laughs> well, okay, now, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Uh, I have a question. What if you already are just a part of a quantum metaverse of some other highly <laughs> sophisticated civilization with huge quantum computers, and we are just running our tasks in the quantum metaverse? You, you metaverse. want the truth? Yes, I want the truth. We are already. I know that. How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I like, I like these this, this kind of questions. Um, I mean, I, I have to be very authentic when people ask me about that. You know, I'm, I'm a very professional scientist and artist and technologist and, you know, <laughs> and businessman. But um, <laughs> this question is, is destroying me every single day. That's why I, I uh, saved it, it for this. And, and yeah, and I, 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 when I try to answer, it depends on the day, right? Uh, so today, in this moment, my answer would be that even though I am not a believer, in fact, I am anti-religious, intellectually against any form of religion, these kind of questions, uh, so the essential questions of why life, why this, why that, are, are, are impossible to handle at a rational level. So I respect religions. I am not religious, so I suffer. What can I say? With your question, I suffer only. <laughs> I would like to answer it, yes, but I, I have no idea. All right, Dennis, uh, uh, one more down-to-earth question. Uh, 
focusing on the last uh, the last slide so because you already built a quantum nft you said we could connect our brains to control a quantum computer so how long will it, will it be that like people like us you know just like not scientists not researchers get in touch with quantum computers for the first good time and point. what could be the applications for good, that? Good point, yes. In fact, uh, my philosophy in the business of quantum computing is that I want to democratize quantum computer since children in the school, babies if necessary, <laughs> until anyone in the society. And I think, uh, uh, as I said in the example of the iPhone, right, I use an iPhone or a smartphone. I don't need to understand how to design the semiconductors of the chip or the, the optics of the camera, you know, and for quantum computers in this moment there is a huge misleading step is that on practically you need to become an expert in quantum computing and quantum physics to, to control it. And uh, be sure that our products will come to you and without any pre-knowledge, like with a smartphone, you will interact and you will use it freely. I don't think that we need to understand. Everybody drives cars, have no idea about even second Newton law, right? That, that's the way it should, it should be, and that's the way we will try to approach. Now concerning, when you said connecting the quantum computer to the brain, I wanted to tell you <laughs> something because I have been learning a lot in the last months of, of neuroscience and neurotech. And one of the, the beautiful questions I want to answer is that when you put a quantum computer online connected to your brain through this VCI, there is this plasticity of the brain. The, brain, the, the fact that I am talking to you, I'm sorry, I'm transforming your brain. Right? But you are also transforming oh, it feels mind. good, it feels right? good. This, this, is, this is the real life. You yeah. observe a beautiful painting, you change your brain yeah. physically, no? at a really physical level. So from that point of view, one of the beautiful questions is when you will be constantly operating a quantum computer with your brain, the plasticity and the operations of your brain will learn to control quantum algorithms. So we don't know what will be the consequences. It could be some things that are bad. It could be that it cures some mental illnesses. So <laughs> all these would have to be explored because the brain, when, when the brain interacts with a machine, like you know, through the brain computer interfaces, it is modified. So how a brain is modified, is uh, uh, my example was your brain modifies the quantum computer, but the quantum computer modifies your brain. And in this feedback, w there will be a lot of research to be done concerning this. Yeah. One last question. Um, focusing on the, the first part of your talk, when you said that science and art is basically the same and that the scientists mm -hmm. and artists uh, m makes a difference. I know that you work in many parts of the world. You uh, worked in s Southern Europe, you worked in Asia. Now you came to uh, good old Munich. So how different were the reactions uh, when you confronted scientists with the analysis that they were basically all artists as well? Wow, that's a very, very deep. Yeah, there is a culture of science. So let's say if you go, I have studied in Brazil, I have studied in Peru, France, Italy, Spain, Germany, China, Australia, US. And there are different ways of seeing science uh, and different ways um, um, of, of associating or too serious or, or too open. Um, and Germany has a strong tradition of science that is too serious too serious in the in the pejorative sense right so yeah that's what I'm here because I am not yes you make a <laughs> you make science more fun <laughs> thanks for this Enrique Solano thanks for this great talk and we're <laughs> really looking forward for the quantum NFT and that's that you why just when promised. Wolfgang Kerle wrote me and said guy you are invited I say I go there <laughs> perfect to teach you. yeah because this guy is not that serious, which is a compliment for you. Thanks, and take Wonderful. this as a, an example. If I write you and say you should be on the <laughs> stage, just accept and, you know, and, and deliver Goldman, such just a Just let me tell you, look, people tell me, you know, this is the right way to go, you go there. When you try to go there, but then you go there. And then you end up, but there are only four times that you can make lateral thinking. So that's your learning for today. Lateral thinking is important, but there are only four directions. All right. You get the point? I know, but I no. try. <laughs> 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 Thank, thanks, thanks, uh, thank you out there.